Hey, I'm Katie Fox, and welcome to my review of Titan Season 3, Episode 1. I'm going to start with a spoiler-free review and then move on to some talking points. If you enjoy my content, let me know in the comments down below. Give me a like, share this channel, help me grow. It would mean so much to me. I've done YouTube for a long time, but I decided to come back and start a brand new channel. And it's all going to be about geeky stuff. So this is just the beginning. I hope you'll stick around for the ride, for the journey to come. So thank you for watching and giving me a chance. On to the review. So this is the spoiler free review. So if you're a Titans fan and you're not one of those people that really doesn't like the show, then I definitely think it's worth checking out. It's it's a pretty unforgettable episode because it has some pretty big moments and I think if you if you enjoyed season one or two or both you you'll want you'll want to see this episode for sure um, I'm obviously rating it on the scale of I'm I'm the type of person who likes Titans so I would give this episode probably an 8 out of 10 now come the spoilers the talkie points go that away or something. I don't know. I just, it's going to get spoilery in here. So Jason dies in the first five minutes. The infamous crowbar death of the family scene happens. Uh, I did not expect that to happen so quickly. I didn't, I didn't think that that's how they were going to start the, the season. I, I knew that they were heading in that direction, but I thought maybe they would give it a few episodes. Then it cuts away, then it cuts away, and we see it. Nightwing and Cory and Beast Boy uh, and Superboy, they're all fighting these criminals, and then after they're done, they go and talk to some reporters that are waiting to talk to them, other than Dick, who doesn't get involved because he didn't do press in Gotham, and so he doesn't think he should do it anywhere. And then Cory makes a funny joke that that's probably why he wasn't very popular. And the Nightwing fight is pretty great. He looks great. I think he's one of the best casted characters on a show in a long time. And Cory looked pretty amazing too. So it looks like maybe their budget went up or they spent their money better this season. So that, that was kind of exciting to see. I will say they do continue to seem lost about Beast Boy. He, he's not sure what he is. They don't seem to know what he is. That's very clear. That, that's just how it is. So keep that in mind. They're still looking for him. They haven't, they haven't figured him out yet, but it's only the first episode. So we'll, we'll see. Um, it's kind of the same story for Superboy. He's not very interesting. I'm not totally sure where they're going to go with that. He's basically played off as like a brick character when he's not, like he would actually have quite a lot of depth, enough to have an existential crisis. I hope he becomes more compelling as the show progresses. So we're introduced to Tim Drake, then Dick returns to Gotham to make sure that Bruce is okay after losing Jason. He seems to be taking it pretty hard, he's cleaning the blood out of the Robin suit himself. He seems to be taking hard, but at the same time, he's also keeping tabs on criminals, so I don't totally know how accurate that is. I will say Ian Glenn is more effective as Batman in this season. Um, his accent is a little bit less noticeable, and his presence seems more akin to Batman, so that is something too. Barbara shows up. Um, she seems to be a good choice of actress. She's a little bit older looking than the rest of the gang, but she does seem to play Babs pretty well. She She's currently playing her as Oracle, so she does a pretty good job with that. Then Barbara decides to visit with Batman and talk about the good old times basically as a ruse, just so that she can tell him that she doesn't want him to take on another Robin, that he is just basically lining up kids for slaughter and that that's not right and it, and it needs to end with Jason and 
Bruce does not agree. <laughs> um, so that was interesting. I think, I think it's too bad that that's how we're choosing to view Batman. Like it, when I was growing up, it was always he would find a kid who had who was you find a kid who had a terrible life terrible set of circumstances and he would give them the choice on whether or not to be a superhero and it's like obviously the kid is going to choose to do the hero thing like that's literally the most exciting think about your think about your child self that's the most exciting thing that's ever happened you're going to say yes are you going to be glad that you did? Are you going to regret it? Are you going to stop doing it later in life? Maybe, but are you going to probably say yes? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I never really read it in a sadistic Batman way. I read it as a no kid is going to turn down that gig kind of a way. So then next up, Dick finds the lab that's creating the synthetic uh, fear toxin like concoction and he wastes no time putting that man's face through glass even my husband said it we were <laughs> it, it was very reminiscent of the fuck batman moment which is which they're both episode one um where he he takes the guy like he's already super hurt and he's just like mm, and he drags his face through glass and you're like was that necessary Dick, was that necessary? <laughs> I just don't know. I think I think the beating before was enough, but okay, it's, you do you. And then the big ending, the ending is very big, um, pretty shocking. We have Batman walk into Dick's room, it's the middle of the night, he drops down a crowbar that's covered in blood. Obviously, he has done what we think he's done. He says, I've done it, I've ended it, I've killed Joker. The whole time he laughed because I proved him right. And then turned around and was like, I'm done here. It's up to you to be a better Batman than I was. And left. And Dick's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what just happened? Ends with Bruce leaving the city and stopping the whole Batman gig and leaving it up to and leaving it up to Dick essentially whether or not he chooses to take on that job I don't know we'll have to see in the next episode um but yeah that's where it ends so <laughs> I hope this was an entertaining retelling of it um I hope I raised some interesting points I don't know if you share them Sound off in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about everything. If you enjoyed the episode, if you like the show, if you feel like it has a lot of potential but doesn't always stick the landing, where do you fall on that scale? There's a certain there's a certain scale when it comes to Titans and fans of the show. So let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video or you like my upcoming content, please subscribe to my channel. Share if you can. Um, Anything helps because I'm just restarting, so um, any help is super appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next review of Season 3, Episode 2 of Titans. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Katie Fox. Bye!